It's always a joy to ride a bike and riding on a trail double bonus. And to be able to do so at roughly 20 miles per hour while leisurely pedaling, well that means I'm on something providing a boost to my normal output abilities. Today that bike is another boundary, a name well established at Kev Central. Can you believe it? It was back in 2017 when I bought my first boundary. I didn't know it back then, but that would set a tone here at Kev Central, and Schwinn upped the game in 2020 when they updated the boundary. That update, part of a trifecta, an onslaught from Schwinn redefining what it means to be a big box mountain bike. So good that it became the 29er of choice for many budget mountain bike riders and myself. I've had fun upgrading the boundary. From base necessities to goofy experiments and all the way to project status, where it's been updated even further, you'll see that soon. This new boundary though, it's a bit different because it's a boundary electric. So it brings with it electrical connections, batteries, keys and all. This has actually been out for a while, and big box e-bike offerings are rapidly evolving, and as of the making of this video, the boundary electric is $798 on the Walmart website. And they do give some good basic details on what you can expect from the Boundary Electric, but many viewers ask if this is a regular Boundary fitted with an electric motor or if it's a completely different bike. It's mostly different. For example, the bars. They're only 655 millimeters wide, but they are what Schwinn calls oversized, which means 31.8 millimeter diameter. The threadless headset, that may look familiar because thank goodness we're finally seeing threadless headsets on just about everything called a mountain bike at Walmart. Grips, standard slip-ons. And I like seeing this too, the trigger shifter. Seven speed shifting via the micro shift shifter with an easy to read selection view window. Brake levers, a tip that this is electric because you can see the wiring for the motor cutoff switch. And that's just the tip of the iceberg because on the left hand side of the bars, it's all e-bikes. With the familiar often seen on Walmart e-bikes, 810 LED display. No frills, yet functional with three pedal assist speeds, a 6 km per hour walk mode, and four bars to give you a quick look at the battery level. Easy to use and simple. Beside that, the thumb throttle. Now previously, I was told that Walmart shunned e-bikes with throttles. Apparently, not anymore. Another thing that's new, or maybe I just haven't noticed, has Schwinn covertly updated their star logo. Updated logo or not, the one thing this frame does have is something that Schwinn has been doing since 2020. That's a tapered head tube. Now, I haven't disassembled this yet, but based on the spacing that I see here for this straight steer forks crown race, I think we have another true taper. Now on e-bikes, Schwinn progress. The fork, though, it's nothing special, but it is in line with the other 2020 updates, meaning that it is reinforced slightly. But it is no frills as far as suspension forks go, and there's no stated travel, but my grease mark measurements say 65 millimeters. So the forks highlights, I guess, that it has some travel and that the branding graphics match the rest of the bike. The biggest downside, that there is no quick release up front. These are bolt-on wheels. Tires, kinda, they're not true mountain bike tires, I would call these more path hybrids. They're size 29 by 2.10. Rims are double wall alloy and they're Schwinn branded, but these are not the same wheels on the mountain bike version of the Boundary. Both bikes are the same wheel size though, they're both 29ers. The frame, clearly different than any previous Boundary, and that's a good thing considering this is an e-bike, that means this is purpose built. For an e-bike housing the battery, the electrical necessities, this is a large frame, size 19.5 inches. It looks to be well constructed and the finish excellent. Black with blue and gray graphics. Being purpose built, the battery is flush mount. The electrical wiring routes internally. Getting power to where it needs to be and that gets us to one of the power points because if you choose pedal assist mode, you're part of the power so you need pedals. And these pedals are, well, I don't know what these are. They're kind of half city bike, half cruiser. The crank arms though, I do know what those are. They are alloy and they're 170 millimeters, connected to them a large single chain ring. At the back, the action point where the power plant resides, a micro shift 26C derailleur. I actually prefer these over some budget derailleurs and note that this one is connected to a replaceable derailleur hanger. The rear gearing, a 14 to 28 tooth, seven speed free will, but here's the power maker. The rear hub motor. A 250 watt hub motor, a common output for Walmart e-bikes. It should be enough to get all this going. Getting it stopped, that job goes to generic mechanical disc brakes. With the front rotor, 180 millimeters, the rear, 160. Here's something new to the boundary name, the suspension seat post. 
perhaps a nod that this bike may be more built for comfort rather than shredding mountain bike trails. Further reinforced by this very thick saddle, it's still a mountain bike profile and it has a relief groove, but we'll see how comfortable this is on the trail. If you don't hear me complaining about it, then it must be okay. The Cadence Sensor, a sealed magnet bike, telling the bike when to turn the power on and off based on pedaling. My hardwood floors appreciate the kickstand having a boot. Limited lifetime warranty, this refers to the frame itself. This is a 6061 aluminum frame, and the power rating for this bike, it's a class 2 e-bike, speeds up to 20 miles per hour. Is all this worthy of the boundary name? Well, on the Walmart website, they call this an electric mountain bike, so I took it to a trail. But there's one thing that we all know. That word mountain bike is kind of a pliable title because, yes, this can be ridden on some mountain bike trails. For instance, it's a great fit here, and this is the trails at Joe Wheeler State Park, about 25 miles from my house. These are an example of trails that are pitched as mountain bike trails, but I think they appeal mostly to walkers. And I don't think they're particularly good if you're envisioning mountain bike riding, but on a bike like this, they are an absolute blast because it's easy to zip around at 20 miles per hour without even breaking a sweat. The 36 volts and 250 watts, now I've said it before and I'll repeat it here, power is great, but lower numbers don't automatically mean less fun. There's nothing on this trail that I can't tackle with this bike, and it may look like all this is flat on screen, but trust me. Ride a regular mountain bike here, and you'll quickly realize that it somehow seems to be about 75% uphill. And the Boundary Electric handles these hills with relative ease for the most part. Now, on the steepest hills, which for some reason on this trail always happen after a 90 degree turn, it does slow considerably, but you can see here, even at throttle only, it's still propelling me up the hill. And while I slowly work my way up this hill, I'll tell you about another camera deception. This looks like it's hard packed dirt, but it's actually hard packed with a light coating of loose rocks over it. And I know from experience that these can get loose quick, especially on an e-bike, because all the weight is in the back and that's where the power is outputting from. So the back wheel can kind of jut out to the side at unexpected moments. But I do have to say that these hybrid-ish tires are doing far better than I would have anticipated. How about this big box suspension fork? Well, on these trails, it's usable. It's still a bit noisy, as is the MicroShift 26C, but they'll get the job done here. I've had zero chain drops and no shifting issues, though for the most part, I do stick in the highest gear with periodic points of throttle only. So this can handle light trails, be it with that throttle or at pedal assist. And so far, performance-wise, I've had this bike at the trails twice and around the city multiple times, and I'm getting a top speed not quite of 20 miles per hour, but 18.1. That's where the motor tends to cut off. Doesn't matter if I'm on flat ground or if I'm going downhill, 18.1 miles per hour. And always a concern with cadence sensor e-bikes, the run out of pedal effect. This has zero run out of pedal. Here I'm right at the cutoff point for the motor at top speed and there's still resistance. How about that cadence sensor and motor on off? It takes one full revolution to engage the motor. It turns off as fast as I expect and once going it only takes a half revolution. Motor noise, 250 watt motors typically aren't very loud and this one is no exception. It sounds just about like every other 250 watt motor. As a bike, it's important that it shift through well, and this does. Right out of the box, it didn't have to adjust anything. It will work through all seven gears. And the 180-160 disc combo stops the bike well, even from top speed. Can the bike be ridden without any pedal assist or electric power? Yes, as I found out on my first outing here with it going uphill. Trying to get back, you can see I'm desperately trying to get that extra ounce of battery power, anything, to give a little boost but it can be ridden as a standard bike. It's just a heavy bike to pedal. So it rides like a regular bike. It rides like an e-bike with a top speed of 18.1 miles per hour in my experience. What about range? Marketing says up to 45 miles. My results thus far, using throttle only, I get eight miles on this trail. And on this trail, using a mix of pedal assist modes, I get up to 25 miles. Well, that's actually a mix of trail and around town, up to 25 miles. That's been my peak thus far. Now, I don't doubt I could get over 30 if I stuck to pedal assist one, but who's going to do that? So 45, I don't know, maybe flat ground with an ultra strong wind constantly at your back? I guess it's theoretically possible. But I would gauge expectations based on a 25-ish mile range. 
Now this is based on my experience of being a 174 pound rider on a mountain bike trail, a mix of street, a mix of pedal assist modes, and throttle mode, obviously, your mileage may vary. And that gets us to here. My overall summary of the Boundary Electric. First thing is finally an e-bike from Schwinn with a throttle available at Walmart. That's a huge plus from what we've had previously. And this flush mount battery. It's easy to remove, though it can be charged in or out of the bike. It's 36 volt, we knew that part. The amp hour, 7.8 amp hour. And on the front, a triple LED indicator lets you know what the battery charge level is at when it's out of the bike. And it goes back in the frame as easy as it removes and it's secured via a keyed lock. Not talking about the power for a second, as a basic bike, I touched on it earlier, but this can be ridden without power and it does work fine. Though trust me, you're going to want the power plus. We pay for the assist, why not use it? While using it, it's easy power to control thanks to the cadence sensor and the other sensors like the motor shutoff switches. Is it worthy of being called a mountain bike? Well, to me, it's more of a light trail bike path sort of bike. Great on city streets where potholes are no problem thanks to the fork and the suspension seat post. Plus, it has city friendly rack and fender mounts too. Included with the bike is a charger and plenty of cable clips to neatly arrange the cables and wires up front. And there's even this thing if you don't like seeing the exposed stem cap bolt. And that's my initial observations on the Schwinn Boundary Electric. Now I'm sure many of you are going to have opinions and I can't wait to see them, so comment below. I'll put a link to this bike down in the description. And remember, using the links here at Kev Central is a great way to support the channel without spending any more than you were already going to spend. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.